All right, this is fourth grade, module six, lesson three. And in this lesson, students are going to be experiencing this idea of mixed numbers. And they're gonna be experiencing it in a variety of different uh, representations. They're gonna be looking at a mixed number, uh, specifically decimals, right? With place value disks, they're gonna be looking at these decimals, these mixed decimals, so like 4.3. Um, on a number line, they're going to be thinking about that decimal as an expanded notation, both with decimals, using fractions, using words. I mean, the idea is let students experience a number, 4.3, in a variety of different ways so that students can compare and contrast all of these methods uh, of representations, all these different representations, and develop a really deep understanding of what decimals mean uh, rather than just have students think that a decimal is kind of like a whole number except with a dot somewhere. And, and we, so we want students to have a deep understanding. And that's what this lesson is about. So let's get started. So as an example, uh, let's say we've got our number line up here and these large hash marks are our whole numbers. So let's just suppose we've got 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. All right, and I just arbitrarily chose to start at 8. And I worked my way up, a whole number each time. And then the idea is because, oh, let's zoom in between 9 and 10. Uh, well, no, let's zoom in between 8 and 9. I, I want to avoid the number 10. Uh, because we see that between 8 and 9, it's cut into 10 pieces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And remember, we're counting the intervals, um, and so there's 10 intervals between 8 and 9, so that makes these tenths. For example, if I wanted to look at this dot right here, uh, what is the value of that dot on the number line? Where on the number line is that dot? And the idea is, well, we know it's going to be between 8 and 9, so it's going to be 8 point something. So I can write 8 point something. And then we're going to look, and we're going to say, well, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So uh, it's 4 out of 10, right, across. So another, uh, to first think of it as a fraction, we could think of it as 8 and 4 tenths, because it's 8 plus 4 tenths, all right? And then the decimal equivalent of 8 and 4 tenths is 8.4. And so we can see the one location is seen as a location on a number line, it's seen as a fraction, it's seen as a decimal, and we could even uh, write it in expanded form. And there's a variety of ways we could write it as expanded form. So first off, I'm going to skip the number line part because it's kind of up here. right? Now what is, uh, I like to think of mixed numbers first as a fraction. So that's 8 and 4 tenths because we did four intervals out of ten, so it's eight and four tenths. All right, and now, now I'm going to backtrack and say, well, what's the decimal form? And the decimal form is eight point four. I think the reason I do that is because fractions were invented long before decimals were, and so technically speaking, developmentally speaking, from a I don't know, an evolutionary point of view, so to speak. Fractions are easier than decimals because they were invented first. We walk before we run because walking is easier than running. And so because fractions were invented first, they are easier than decimals. A lot of students disagree with me, but um, that's why I start with the fraction. So what does that look like? And we have a choice. We can do expanded form with fractions or with decimals. I'm going to do them both real quick. So as a decimal, 8.4 is 8 plus 0 0.4. There's our expanded notation as a decimal. Or we could do 8 plus 4 tenths. And there is our expanded notation as a fraction. This is important, uh, especially when we start dealing with hundredths or thousandths down the road, especially in fifth grade. So we do want to talk about that expanded notation. Please don't shortchange it. Another way you could think of this is you could say this is eight ones plus four tenths. It doesn't say we have to do it that way, but there's nothing wrong with adding that 
as one of our expanded notations. It's kind of like unit form rather than fractions or decimals. And then if we wanted to, how much more is needed to get to the next whole number? Uh, and that's a good idea to just help have students develop that. It's kind of like a number bond, really. Or uh, what is What do you need to add to that four-tenths to get to the next whole number? Six-tenths. So we could say either six-tenths or six-tenths, your choice. So that's the general idea of what's going and the idea of letting students experience the same value in a whole bunch of different ways as a decimal, as a fraction, in a variety of expanded notations, plus in relation to the next whole number, wherever we happen to be. So we have more kind of variety of ways for students to think about these numbers. Let's do, let's take a look at B. So how many tenths do we have in all? And they, they have conveniently organized these in 10 frames. So we see 10, 20, 25. So there are 25 tenths. Now it doesn't say so, but 25 tenths could be written as, 20, whoa, uh, could be written as 25 tenths if we wanted to as a fraction. So it's not, I'm not going to write it as a decimal quite yet. I'm not, we're not quite ready for that. Now over here it says write and draw the same number using ones and tenths. So the idea is to say, hey, wait a second, 10 tenths right here. 10 tenths equals one whole. And then we could see, wait a second, over here, 10 tenths equals one whole. And then what do we have left over? We have five tenths. So that five tenths is we're actually going to have to write that out. So we've got 0 0.1. And then there's, there's no way to make that uh, more condensed. So we just two, three, four, five. There we go. So there's our one whole. And there's our five tenths. And by the way, these are not drawn to scale, so it's not like we want students to think that point 0.1 is as big as 1 because the, I drew the circles, the disks, the same size, right? So make sure students don't get the, like a misunderstanding there. And so what's our decimal form? Well, our decimal form is 2 and 5 tenths. So our decimal form is 2 and 5 tenths. And then right here, how much more is needed to get to 3, and so since we've gone 5 out of the 10 ways, 5 tenths, so we need 5 tenths more. We can either write it like that, or we can write it like that. Here, draw disks to represent each number using 10s, 1s, and 10s, and then show the expanded form of the number in fraction form and decimal form. So here's our little format here. So five tens, so what is five tens gonna look like? Well, five tens is gonna be, here's a 10, and we need five of those. And so there's our five. And then we need three ones, because it says so right there. So we need three ones, so one, two, three, and then we need seven tenths. So seven tenths, so that's gonna be a 0 0.1, and we need seven of those guys. And so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So in fact, let me put it in 10 frame font, uh, format. So we got the 5 plus the 2 more. So there's our 7. So there is our value uh, and using place value disks. And then if we want that in expanded form, so we've got 5 copies of 10. So that's going to be 5 copies of 10 plus then we have 3 copies of 1. So it's going to be 3 copies of 1. And then it's going to be seven copies of 0.1. So it's going to be plus seven copies 
of 0 0.1, and there's your answer. And that, what does that equal as a decimal? Well, that's going to be 50 plus 3, so that's 53, and then here's 0 0.7, so it's going to be 53.7. So the idea is, how can we write that as a fraction? Well, as a fraction, it's going to start off the same way. We have 5 copies of 10, 5 copies of 10, plus we have 3 copies of 1, 3 copies of 1, plus we have 7 copies of 1 tenth. So as a fraction, that's going to look like 7 copies of 1 tenth. And that ends up equaling 53 and 7 tenths. So working in reverse, we want students to be able to see this number and decompose it into its parts. All right, similar to a slide I did earlier in this video, the idea is we've got all these representations, one, two, three, four, five different represent, well, really, it's four representations plus, you know, understanding how the relationship is with the next whole number. And so we have these four different representations, and we want to be able to start with any one of those representations and fill in the remaining three. So you've got a Right here, it's in fraction form, 4 and 6 tenths. So the decimal t form would be 4.6. In expanded form, we get a choice of fraction or decimal. So I will do 4 plus 6 tenths because I like fractions. And then in as a number line, so what two whole numbers is 4.6 going to live between? Well, it's going to live between uh, 4 and 5. So there is our two whole numbers that it lives between. Now, where is 4 and 6 tenths going to live specifically? So here's 4. So it's going to be 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths. 5 tenths is right in the middle. And then plus 6 tenths. So it's going to be right here. And that is where 4.6, or 4 and 6 tenths, is going to live. And then the question is, how much further till the next whole number? And it's going to be 4 tenths. So if we wanted to write that in, we would say it is 4 tenths until the next whole number. And that's the idea for this whole uh, chart. I think what I'll do is, let's take a look at this expanded notation right here. So if we look at it, I'm going to zoom in. So right here, we've got six copies of 10. So we're going to think of that as 60. We're going to think of three copies of 1 as 3. And we're going to think of six copies of 1 tenth as 6 tenths. So what is that as our fraction? That'll be 63 and 6 tenths tenths. So what is that going to be as our decimal? It'll be 63.6. And then how are we going to locate that on our number line? Well, what two whole numbers does this 63.6 live between? Well, it lives between 63 and 64. And then we want 6 tenths. So that means we're going to start here at 63, and then it's 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths, 6 tenths. Right there. So I lost my track. Right, right there, 6 tenths. So that is, what is that? 63.6, and that's also 63 and 6 tenths. How much more do we need until we get to the next whole number? Well, it's four-tenths, all right? And that's the idea. You know what? I just noticed, let's do B, because B is um, a location first. So we've done, let's start, so we've done first starting with a fraction. We've started with expanded form. Now let's start with the number line. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And the idea is, first off, what is our decimal? Well, it lives between 24 and 25. So we know it's going to be 24 point something. 
So now we need to count. One tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths. So it's smack dab in the middle. So that's 24 0.5, 24 and 5 tenths. And when I say it that way, that immediately tells me the fraction is going to be 24 and 5 tenths. And then what is that going to look like in expanded form? Well, we have two copies of 10, that gives us the 20, plus we have four copies of 1, that gives us the the 4 in 24, plus, and I'm going to zoom in here, plus we have 5 copies of a tenth. So we have 5 copies of a tenth. And remember, I could have called that 0.1 or 0 0.1, but I'm going to call it 1 tenth. And there is our expanded form. Beautiful. Parents and teachers, this is just a great way for students to kind of practice all these different representations. And you know what's coming to mind right now is you could play a game of like um, memory or matching or, I don't know, go fish or something like that, where you, you could turn each of these representations into a, a card and then flip over the cards and, and then have the kids play a game where their goal is to collect a set of cards that all are equal to that same value. So it's some sort of game. I don't know what to call it, uh, but you guys are more creative than me. So let's turn these into playing cards and uh, turn this into a game. And that wraps up fourth grade module six, lesson three, representing decimals and fractions, mixed decimals and fractions in a variety of ways. Place value, disks, number line, and expanded form.